All right, so now we're going to talk about how the Fed will attempt to close an inflationary gap using monetary policy. Now, when the Fed does this, we call this contractionary monetary policy. Now, the reason we call it contractionary is because the Fed is trying to force an economic contraction. They're trying to pull back on economic output. Why? Because economic output is out of control. We are overheating the economy. We are overusing resources. And that's going to cause bad things to happen in the economy for the future. We're going to have inflation. We're going to have broken capital. We're going to have broken people. And we're going to have overused and abused natural resources. So the Fed knows that we are overproducing and we need to pull back. We need to pull the reins and slow down the economy just a little bit. Okay. Um, so we know, okay, so here's the circumstance over here. We've got an aggregate market graph. You can see long run aggregate supply, natural real GDP. You can see that short run equilibrium over here on the right. It's too high. We are overproducing. We are in an inflationary gap. Okay. Real GDP is higher than, greater than natural real GDP, and that means that our un unemployment rate is lower than the natural uh, rate of unemployment, and that's not good for the economy. We are overusing our labor resources. We're using them inappropriately, and we're overpaying them in some, in some ways, okay? So we need to pull back on the economy. So the Fed is thinking, okay, we know that the way that we can pull back on the economy is if we pull back on aggregate demand. So we need to decrease aggregate demand. And as we saw in a, in a previous lesson, that the way that we decrease aggregate demand or the way that the Fed can decrease aggregate demand is if they decrease the money supply. So we need to decrease in aggregate demand by decreasing the money supply. Now, the Fed has three tools at its disposal. It can buy and sell government securities in, the open, in open market operations. They can increase or decrease the discount rate, or they can increase or decrease the reserve ratio. Now, if you look back at your notes uh, from a couple lessons ago, uh, we know that the way that they decrease the money supply is by selling government securities in open market operations. Okay? So when they sell money or sell government securities in open market operations, uh, what that's going to do is uh, that's going to decrease bank reserves because banks are going to have to take money out of their reserves to buy the government securities from the Fed. And the Fed is going to require them to do this. So they're going to, and the Fed is going to transfer the money out of their bank reserves. Now that their bank reserves are lower, that means that the monetary base in the economy is also lower, and a decrease in the monetary base is going to trigger money destruction. And so that's going to result in a decrease in the money supply. Now, we know that in the credit market, when the vertical money supply curve shifts to the left, that results in an increase in interest rates in the money market, and because interest rates have now gone up, it costs more money for businesses and for, for households, for individuals to make purchases that they want to purchase. Businesses are going to say, interest rates are high. We don't want to invest in that project right now. It's not going to earn that much money. So businesses are going to spend less money on their investments. Households are going to spend less money because they don't want to get bogged down in, in the high interest rates. Okay, And so we are going to have a decrease in consumption, and we're also going to have a decrease in investment in the economy. Lower consumption, lower investment, the two biggest pieces of total expenditure, means that total expenditure is also going to decrease, and a decrease in total expenditure is associated with a decrease in aggregate demand. Now, when aggregate demand decreases, that is going to mean a leftward shift of the aggregate demand curve, leftward shift, and the new aggregate demand curve is now going to be over here, AD prime. And you can see now 
that the intersection, the short-run equilibrium intersection between aggregate demand and short-run aggregate supply is now to the left, right on top of long-run aggregate supply, a de because we're having a decrease in real GDP, putting us in long-run equilibrium and closing the inflationary gap, right? Why? Because at the end of this whole thing, we had a decrease in output, decrease in real GDP. Now, by o Oaken's law, we know that when real GDP goes down, when output goes down, there aren't as many people working, and so then we will also see an increase in the unemployment rate because fewer people will be working. Increase in unemployment rate. Okay, So real GDP will go down so that we're equal with natural real GDP. The unemployment rate will go up so that it is equal with the natural rate of unemployment. Okay, And that's what the Fed is hoping, hoping to accomplish when they sell government securities in the open market. They're hoping that a modest decrease in the money supply will slow the economy down just enough so that we don't overuse our resources. Well, it has happened before where the Fed has tried to do this and consumers and businesses, we didn't care. Interest rates went up a little bit and we, were, we didn't care. We were like, no, there's good stuff going on out here. I, there's still money to be made. I'm just going to lose a little bit of money because of the higher interest rates. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep chugging. And they just kept the train moving and it did not affect the inflationary gap, which eventually resulted in a huge bubble burst and a crash and, and, everything, um, and everything wound up spiraling down into a recessionary gap. Okay. All right, so what the Fed will do is, if they're not having an effect on the economy by selling securities in the open market, is they'll move to the discount rate. Okay, all right, well, let's do something about, uh, about interest rates. And because they want to decrease the money supply, remember, to decrease the money supply, they need to increase the discount rate. They need to charge banks more money for borrowing from the Fed. And so the, hopefully the banks will now say, okay, well, we don't want to borrow very much money from the Fed, so we're not also not going to lend much money out. Okay? And hopefully that will restrict borrowing, it will restrict spending, and hopefully it will cool off the economy. Well, because the banks are not borrowing as much money because of a, a higher discount rate, that's going to decrease bank reserves. Banks won't, won't borrow as much into their reserves so that they can loan it out which will lead to a decrease in the monetary base, which will trigger money destruction and a decrease in the money supply, which we know in the money market will be a leftward shift of the money supply curve and cause interest rates to go up. The increase in interest rates will discourage spending by consumers and it will also discourage spending by businesses. So con consumption and investment will go down a decrease in consumption and investment will cause total expenditure to go down, which is associated with a decrease in aggregate demand, shifting the aggregate demand curve to the left, decreasing real GDP, closing the inflationary gap, and bringing the economy into long-run equilibrium where we are not overusing our resources, where, where we are not abusing our resources. And so the, way, the reason that this worked was because we had a decrease in real GDP, which then resulted in an increase in the unemployment rate. And I know that every time I say increase in the unemployment rate, that sounds cringeworthy, like, no, we don't want that. Yes, we do. We do want the unemployment rate to go up if it is below the natural rate of unemployment. We do not want to be overusing our labor resources. We need our labor resources to have some breathing room so that they can move from one job to another, so that they can acquire skills before they go into a job that they're going to get paid for. Okay? We don't want people out of work because there aren't jobs available, but we do want there to be people out of work because they're moving from one job to another job. Okay? All right. Let's say that increasing the discount rate doesn't work. The Fed tried that. It's happened before in history. They increased the discount rate. No, spending does not slow down. They increase the discount rate again. Spending again does not slow down. It's just not working or it only slows down a little bit. So now what they're going to do is, well, what they could do is they could then move to the uh, reserve ratio. 
And if you look back at your notes, to decrease the money supply, the Fed will increase the reserve ratio. This is going to have two effects in the banking world. The first effect that it's going to have, or one of the effects it's going to have, is it's going to decrease the potential deposit multiplier, which will, uh, it will dampen the effect of the money creation process. Instead of multiplying by 20, we're now multiplying by 17. And so the money creation process is slowed down. It's not as uh, strong. It's not as much of a large uh, increase in the money supply. So we're decreasing the potential deposit multiplier. Also, there will be a decrease in excess reserves. Money that banks had available to loan out, they no longer can use for loaning out because it needs to cover the higher reserve ratio requirement. These two things are going to result in money destruction and a decrease in the money supply. We know that when the money supply decreases, that that will result in an increase in interest rates. And now that, now that interest rates are higher, again, businesses and households, they're less willing to spend. They're just not going to spend as much money. So there will be a decrease in consumption in the economy and a decrease in investment in the economy. When consumption and investment go down, because they are the biggest components of total expenditure, we will have a decrease in total expenditure which is associated with a decrease in aggregate demand. And hopefully now, the aggregate demand curve will fully shift to the left, closing the inflationary gap and putting the economy back into long-run equilibrium. Why? Because real GDP decreases. So we will have a decrease in real GDP, and that will then result in an increase in the unemployment rate. Okay? And then once we're back into long-run equilibrium, that will also put us in a place where we are experiencing price level stability. So now we have, as long-run aggregate supply slowly over time increases, we'll have economic growth. As long as we're in long-run equi equilibrium, we'll have the natural rate of unemployment. Okay, That's full employment. And we will have price level stability. We'll have a little bit of inflation, but not so much that people can't plan for it. Okay, And so this is contractionary monetary policy. These are the three tools of the Federal Reserve. When they want to use monetary policy to manage the economy and close an inflationary gap. Okay, All right, folks, that's it. I hope it's been a good semester. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, hopefully you can now take this economic knowledge and move on to a higher level of economics learning or take this economics knowledge and move on to learning about marketing or learning about finance or learning about managing businesses and that sort of thing. Okay. All right. Good luck to you and take care.